Hello and welcome to the Dojo Live. Hello, I got a little too excited today. <laughs> welcome to the Dojo Live recap show this Monday, May 16th, 2023. My name is Kim Lantis and joining me is my co-host, America Guerrero. Hello, everybody. Ready Hello. to share my <laughs> knowledge of what I learned. Yes, yes. Thank you, America. So what do we do on the Dojo Live recap show? We talk about our insights and takeaways from last week's shows and, of course, introduce what we've got coming up this week as well. So last week was a busy week. We had a total of three shows here on Dojo Live. Uh, first up was Rakesh Yadav, who's the CEO of Adaptive. And he talked about AI and machine learning as it applies to e-commerce. Uh, of course, for somebody who has been using machine learning already for the different pieces, the lift might not be that much. But more than just the revenue lift, there is a, something to be said about being adaptable to changing market conditions. For example, everything was looking good, but then uh, COVID hit. So how does the inventory change? And then uh, do we really still want to show the same product recommendation? How quickly can uh, rules-based or human-based analysts can adapt? And after that, we had Irv Lustig, who's an optimization principal with Princeton Consultants. And that was all about optimization's essential role in the AI revolution. You have to pick, you've got a hammer, and you're looking for the nail. And the answer is you first find the nail and then find your right hammer that you want to use. And so optimization is can be one of the hammers in the toolbox that you mm. use to be able to solve these critical business problems. And last but not least, we wrapped up the week with Didi Das, who's the founding engineer of Glean. And this was talking about how to build AI for enterprise and really what people are trying and what the difficulties are that they're facing when it comes to it's AI. It's so crazy because when I, when I told you, when I sent in this topic, that, that was two months ago and the state of the industry looks almost entirely different from what it does now. Things are changing so, so quickly. It says, you know, Google came and announced 50 things yesterday. It's, it's a really hot, space to be in so many things are happening and i'll try to um so let's get started with the week's first show uh that was with rakesh america what were your takeaways from rakesh's show yes um he's a former google employee right who founded adaptive 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 right two adaptive. years ago so. yeah to offer intelligent products such as personalized recommendations and search results specifically for the e-commerce industry they provide this a user-friendly interface and pre Build models that can easily customize and integrate it to existing e-commerce uh, platforms. Yeah. And something that I really like is when he discussed the importance of continuous learning and updates, particularly in the context that you're working on. For example, if you are in e-commerce and you see that there might be an opportunity in healthcare, hold on. Just be an expert in the e-commerce uh, space, and then you can continue to apply this knowledge in other areas. So yes, was, was stay, stay in your lane, right? Exactly. No, but I mean, Rakesh's show was really great. I think his this was a really great show for me on Dojo Live. I enjoyed this one a lot because it was this really cool balance between what they're doing at Adaptive with his personal story. Uh, takeaways and learnings as well. As it comes to the e-commerce side, it's very cool that there's a tool that's able to offer any e-commerce business, you know, opportunities to personalize and grow uh, without having to, um, you know, depend on, you know, the giants like, like Amazon, but also mm -hmm. to kind of come up with that same experience. But for each experience with your consumer is exactly a unique experience, right? And this is going to work better for those e-commerce sites that have more variety, right? And um, the more variety you have, the more this tool will work for you because it's able to do that matching up with each specific shopper, which I think is super, so super cool. Uh, we talked about, you know, what the benefits are of that, some of the risks as well, uh, what that means for privacy and other things. It was a really, really great show. And as far as Rakesh goes, his words of wisdom, he talked a lot about their team dynamics, planning sessions, and his own personal session. One of my takeaways, too, was how he likes to divide his goals up into about 10 year spans. And throughout that 10 years, he does these kind of check-ins and it's a really, really interesting story. So definitely check out Rakesh. He All right. a website with those words of wisdom. That's true, that's true. He did share that with us. I think we'll get that up on the landing page as well. Uh, the second show was with Irv, Irv Lustig. Joining me on that show was Encorian machine learning engineer, Jorge Hernandez. Uh, we talked about optimization and how Princeton Consultants uh, goes about doing that. America, you didn't co-host that show, but you got to watch the show. What, what did you think? 
yes, it was a really interesting um, topic about optimization. And something that I really liked was when Irv, correct? He emphasized Irv, the mm-hmm. importance of change management techniques in getting adoption and creating awareness of the benefits of optimization applications. Yes. yes, yes. And so, I mean, what Princeton does is they basically consult their clients through that entire process. But what's interesting is optimization is all around us. And it's one of those things that we might that's happening all the time that we might not even recognize. I think the anal- analogy on the show was this idea of oxygen. Uh, Jorge brought up the idea of optimization is what wins wars, essentially, or loses them, right, and the ability to adapt and find out the best ways to do this. Now, of course, Princeton is also doing this through applications uh, and computer science, and they help their customers do that. And also just what happens downstream of all this, right? Taking all of these considerations, if we do move forward, this is a possible outcome, uh, et cetera. And just super, super cool. One of the things that I thought was super cool about Irv's story, this happened at the end of the show, and that was the question of why he wears his hat. And it turns out he's the hat guy, right? Uh, it started years and years ago at different conferences in different places, but his public persona always wears a hat, which makes him extremely identifiable, memorable. Um, So I thought that was a really cool way to see optimization uh, tangibly, right? (laughs) Very, very cool application. So if you're looking to optimize your business, definitely check out Princeton. Uh, They can help you from beginning to end and everything in between. And then finally, we wrapped up the week with Didi Doss. He's the founding engineer at Glean. Um, This was talking all about how to build AI for enterprise, what people are trying, the difficulties they're having. What did you enjoy most about Didi's show, America? That we need to embrace AI. Yeah. (laughs) And you don't need to be necessarily a SaaS platform that offers AI technology. It could be any business, for example. And you could apply this technology to uh, improve, for example, the customer service area, right? So utilizing this kind of technologies gives you the power and also the value out there in the market. So it was it was great. It was. I mean, a lot of the focus here was on generative AI. I'm never going to forget that word again. I had a bit of a, a blank there on the live show. I'm like, Ooh, what type of AI is this? But I remember generative, 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 right? Uh Chat GPT and all these things are all over the place. And, you know, what Glean is able to do is also make that conversational AI um, solve problems for businesses. And so basically you're able to converse with their platform, with their bot, and that bot is able to pull all kinds of information from all across the workplace to answer the questions that you need in real time. Uh, people who are the expert matter subjects, subject matter experts rather, uh, and get you connected. Um, and what I thought was really cool about this is we we talked about reliability and the need still for, at least in my mind, this idea of a bibliography, right? Um, ask the where, correct where, question. Yes, we're able to ask correct questions, but also source where the answers are coming from, which is a really cool way that Glean works. Um, And yeah, we did tap into prompt engineering as well, um, what that means for us. And I think to your point, America, embracing AI, um, we don't all have to to become software developers, right? But just this awareness um, that Didi was encouraging us to have to help empower us to sort of just be on the forefront of what's happening. And we also tapped into the human thought, right, Um, of the ability to still do that analysis and be able to identify Um, what might be true, what might not be true, and um, to still go with our gut, which I think came up on Rakesh's show as well. Mm -hmm. What a great Um, show. What a great, all three of them um, this this past week were amazing. So this week, we've got a bit of a slowdown. Um, Not three shows, it's not packed. We've only got one show uh, coming up, but what a show it will be. Who are we talking with this week, America? Yes, we're going to have a conversation with William Santana Lee. We already had a show with him, but today, well, not today, this week, we're going to have a, this topic, Rise of the Friendly Robots. How are security robots changing the landscape of public safety? He is chairman and CEO of the company Nightscope. That's right. Nightscope was on Dojo Live a um, year, two, three ago. Mm-hmm. I have to check. I don't remember exactly when, but it'll be really cool to see how things have progressed and um what's going on now so that show is (coughs) excuse me tomorrow at 10 o'clock uh pacific we'll see you then Uh, have a great rest of your day a great monday everyone and bye for now